Hey everyone, so The Sims 4 is free from May 21st to May 28th, 2019, as in, if you download it on PC now, it's yours to keep. Because of this and summer break coming up, it seems like a good time to talk about the things beginners should know. A lot of you players who've been around a while know as much or more than I do, so I invite you to share your own tips in the comments or tell me where you disagree. When you start a new game, you are forced to make a sim even if you're going to play an existing household. We do this in create a sim or cast. When we first go to make a sim, we should probably consider what we'd like that sim to do with their life. You get to pick three traits for young adult and up, but a fourth special bonus trait will appear in the box above the other three. The bonus you get is based on your starting aspiration, which is like a sim's lifetime wish, something that will bring them a lot of fulfillment and satisfaction. You should pick your aspiration based on the bonus trait you want above all else, this is because aspirations can be changed at any time without cheating, like so. Muser comes from creative aspirations and helps you level the arts while inspired, and Quick Learner comes from taking a knowledge aspiration and boosts all skills. I recommend one of the skills-based bonuses for a newcomer. Traits are just not very important in 4. They can affect your routine but lack a big gameplay impact by the time you're playing an established sim. The emotional category traits is handy for early in a sim's life, but drops in usefulness as time goes on. Like, if you know your sim's gonna be a programmer, genius is not an awful choice, as it'll help with the occasional focus moodlet. But cheerful is better if you want to keep your options open because of how emotions work, which we'll get into later. Music lover is a fantastic trait, as you can have a bit more fun while doing other things like painting. You can multitask by listening to music and keep your sim happy and have a good way to get inspired. I'm going to make a musician, so I'm going to take Cheerful, Music Lover, and Loves the Outdoors. They'll all three work together for me in certain situations. You can control your sim's muscle and body fat with the two sliders here. If you want to carve out details, it's possible. This is probably the most powerful cast they've made, even if you aren't a fan of the art style. Just click a sim's face, try different things, and drag on them until you're happy with the look. You can click off the sim to return to their body. Everything else in Cass is a matter of taste, but no, you can't just leave on an everyday outfit. Your sim will change into stupid random clothes if you don't set them up. You can also add extra outfits by clicking at the top of the clothing panel, so you don't need to have only one formal outfit, you can have two. One more tip in this area. You can remove things by clicking the little X when you hover over a category or a specific object that a sim is wearing. If you want, you can add more members to a household down here, but the more you have, the harder it gets to manage them, and it may be overwhelming to someone super new. If you are that person, I would not add an extra sim, but it is entirely up to you. You'll start with more money, but need a bit more in the way of objects, have more mouths to feed, and more bills to pay. Household members can be easily removed from here as well. When we're done and create a sim, we can now shop for a house. We have 20,000 and can move into a vacant home. Because we have total control, we can make a house vacant if we want to. The pre-built homes that are empty may look a little old, but are not an awful deal at all. They can help you get off the ground. A little one or two bedroom house that looks decent is what I recommend, though you may not want to furnish it, as you can save some money on silly things like chairs, lights, and countertops. I'm just kidding, you do need countertops. You can, of course, renovate the house you pick. When we buy the house, the money is taken and we're left with our balance. One of the first things we should do is furnish the home. Sims have six needs and we need to be able to fill them at home so it's smart to furnish with them in mind. We have a short checklist of absolute requirements. We need to build for five of them in particular, everything but social. We need a bed to sleep on to regenerate energy, something to pee in to relieve our bladders, something to eat from that is not a toilet, something to clean up in to fill our hygiene, and something to have fun when work stresses us out. Let's look at the five and consider a few other things as well. As I said, sims require several things to stay alive. Something to get food from is a big one. There are a few options, but a cheap refrigerator is definitely helpful. Depending on the packs you own, you can do other things, like live out of a cooler if you have outdoor retreat, or pick fresh produce to eat it from your inventory. This fridge looks like junk, but remember you can change the color of things to make them match the room or look more appealing. No one wants the brown used fridge, but it saves you a few hundred simoleons. Cheap stuff tends to have drawbacks, but it's what we can afford and one of the most satisfying things is moving up in the world. 
Sims also need counter space. If you want to cook, you'll need a place to prep dishes. Counters also function to let you place a sink. Sims will go very, very far to wash dishes if something is blocking them from a sink or go chop veggies in the laundry room if you have no space on the counter in the kitchen. I took a stove, though it's not necessary. Every dish has its own required appliance, and you can make salads and other fresh dishes like that without using a stove at all. What's more, these dishes carry no fire risk, and fires are very common at level 1 cooking. Next, we need something to regenerate energy. I like to look for a bed that does not have uncomfortable, but instead actually offers discomfort relief. If I can afford it, I want an energy 5 one, not a 4. This will help the sim to sleep a bit faster and regenerate energy, giving you more time to do productive or fun things each day. A bathroom is an obvious necessity. We need a toilet for sure. We can just pee on the floor where we stand, but our sim will be uncomfortable for a long time and pretty useless until the dam breaks. Instead, let's do it like a housebroken sim and use a proper toilet. Later on, with handiness, we can install a bidet to keep our buttholes squeaky clean. A shower is what I recommend for starting out if you only have the base game. Baths rock if you have a dog or a toddler and you'll need it in those cases. With Spa Day, you can use soaks that provide powerful long-lasting boosts, but showers are fantastic for a starting musician and we'll soon see why. You can get a few different emotions from your shower. Why the empty desk? Well, so we can buy a computer which requires a surface and a chair. We want to be able to use the internet, play games to rapidly regenerate fun, and chat with other sims from the comfort of our home. We can also use them to manage moods, so I always buy one, pretty much. In this case I go really cheap because for 600 more I only gain one fun and no major points in reliability. Early on I want to repair my computer, it's gobs of free handiness experience. The way we've gone with decorations last ensures we have enough for the necessities and can decorate and improve the house later on. A computer wasn't required at all, it's just affordable this time. There are two main ways to make money, either join a career or learn a skill and profit from it. I'm going to do a little bit of both here. You will find that artsy careers make less in that you can profit from the skill you're using while also collecting a paycheck. So our next task is to get a job. We can use the phone to do that. It's useful to know about the phone. Each tab has different functions related to moving and throwing parties or hiring services. In this case, I need to use the careers tab to look at the jobs list. Since I'm making a musician, my choice is obvious, entertainer. You can be either a comedian or musician in this career track and it lets you choose which skills to build up as you go. There is a comedy skill in game, or you can use any musical instrument to advance, at least at first. Since we have a job, the careers panel now has lots of information for us. Doing the daily task from home will give us a boost. If it's completed before work the next day, we will get a slight boost to the performance meter. They don't take long, so it's worth it. You usually need a related skill to advance anyway. I've already purchased a violin and I'll drag it to my sims inventory by dropping it on top of them. I could have also clicked it and told the sim to pick it up, but if I press I it will come up for me and I can use it from there. I've got to be careful to keep it on me though as it can be left behind. By the way, a lot of the hobby and skill related items are found in this specific tab of build mode. You go to the study tab and hobbies and skills there's also indoor activities so emotions the sims 4 does not have a mood meter instead the various moodlets are applied to a sim to determine a final mood the highest sum being the current mood doing certain activities like having a good meal listening to music brushing your teeth and making babies can all give good moodlets the happy emotion basically exists to boost the others. If a sim is happy and you throw in even one other type that is also positive, that will be the new mood. Happy also prevents negative moods. If your happiness moodlets add up more than your uncomfortable moodlets and you have a focused moodlet, you will keep that mood. Sims can also level skills as you probably know, they get better at things. They do well and learn faster when they're in a positive mood, no matter the kind. The Sims 4's emotion system and gaming it is a big part of trying to do things optimally when you play, whether you want to skill up fast or make a masterpiece painting. In this case, getting inspired is good for my Sim, as it's the best mood for any creative skill. 
Happy would work, but inspired is better. I'll take a thoughtful shower to get inspired, then browse art on the computer. Really, only one of the two is needed. The extra moodlet is not helpful unless it gets you to very inspired. So it's just to demonstrate that you have options. While you're skilling, a bar appears above the sim's head. You can also press L and any skills in the tab that are being improved will glow gold colored to indicate they are in use. Obviously, fill them up and you'll gain a level which will appear in the notifications area in the top right. Be sure to expand it to see what you've gained. Not so obvious is that when your sim is in the right mood for a skill, the bar over their head will glow with that emotion's color. This is also present in socials and interactions that are strongly affected by emotions. Aspirations and whims are the main ways of getting satisfaction points. It's a currency used in the reward store. As my sim is playing violin, he's making progress toward the play music for six hours step of the musical genius aspiration. He's also knocking out the daily task for the career when he reaches level two of the violin. This unlocks new genres for him, but the best unlocks won't come until late in the skill at level eight when he'll learn to write songs and turn music into a minor money maker. <laughs> Completing aspirations grants powerful reward traits and each aspiration has a unique trait you can get. Whims, the little things above the sim's head at the bottom left, were disabled by Maxis a few years into the game's life. I guess players were annoyed by them, but you can re-enable them in the game options gameplay menu if you want to see them. They're like mini wishes and give your sim small amounts of satisfaction when completed. Player annoyance at these is sometimes justified as they have a tendency to recommend things you have no interest in doing. Even though I just practiced for the first day, I set this sim up so that he can breeze through a couple levels of the career with only minor issues. His needs have drained while doing all that practicing and it's a good time to show you a convenient little feature. Next to each need is a small button. If you find yourself in a situation you're lazy, like me always, you can click these auto solve buttons to have a sim use something nearby to fix how they feel. They don't often make good decisions like taking a nap at 10% energy. No, I'm going to bed. But it is the price you pay for the convenience. In particular, it's good for grabbing a quick snack, having fun, or using the toilet. Energy regeneration is really the only area where the auto solver proves itself near useless. Always do your fun and social before bed if you've got to get up for work. They don't decay while hunger, hygiene, and bladder do. One of my favorite time savers in this game is to get inspired and cook up a big family sized meal at the fridge. If it comes out excellent in quality, I keep the leftovers. I'll get seven servings left after my sim eats, put them in the fridge, and now I have four to five days worth of food that also gives my sim a happiness boost. It saves tons of money over single meals and sims enjoy the tangy aftertaste of five day old hamburger helper. Needs have a big impact on performance in everything you do because when they are low, they drag your mood down and this influences success rates on everything. As I said, emotions are the key to manipulating the gameplay systems in Sims 4. So managing needs and making sure you do not go to work with low energy or fun is important. They are able to have lunch and use the restroom while at work though. It just means they may not have uh, the best mood for a time, so it's better not to rely on it. At 9 a.m., it's time for my sim to go to work for the first time. He's got an eight-hour shift ahead, but we have a few hours to prepare for it. Really, the best thing you can do in this game is keep the sim's mood up and hope everything works out. Random events can happen while at work, though you can choose to drain your fun to get more performance. Click the little button on their picture in the bottom while they're at work and choose work hard. I pause to do this because time flies while you're at work. <laughs> now, we're pretty much guaranteed that first promotion. This is easy. Things get a little harder when you have a really short shift or the difficulty of the career is up because you're a rank 7. When we do get a promotion, we get a bonus and sometimes items. Any items we gain are usually found in the family inventory. Though sometimes here lately, you just earn the right to buy them. Some objects are locked behind career levels, in other words, though there is a cheat to fix that flaw. Yes, it's a flaw. I don't believe there is some easel company out there that requires me to work for a corporation. In order to buy their easel, they will sell it to me. With all this down, we can continue our skilling and try to improve our income. This guy can't much support a family yet, assuming we want him to have one. I actually miss the promotion the next day and have a long three-day weekend. I send him out with his violin where he'll play for tips at the park and enjoy the scenery. 
Fizz loves the outdoors trait, keeps him happy all day long while he plays. Taking advantage of your sim strengths will help you along. There is so, so much more to The Sims 4 and I do have my gripes, but it has its charms. But this should function as a glossary of sorts to the systems you need to understand to really get deep into the game. I have much more information here on YouTube, about 55 videos other than this one, that can teach you more in-depth information on individual topics like the gardening skill, and I will continue to make more. I have been covering this franchise since The Sims 3 and will hit 10 years here in July. If you'd like to support me, we have a few options such as Patreon and PayPal in the description. However, sharing my stuff with other people helps to get the word out and maybe every bit is helpful. This video could have gone on even longer, but I have my limits. And I notice a difference in my voice uh, from the beginning to the end from fatigue. <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone and thank you for watching. If you heard this, you're amazing. You actually made it through this long ass video. Have a great weekend.